<laughs> Mom just made a jump through the snow over there. It's uh, really deep out there. It's probably, uh, yeah, they're popping through the snow right there, but it's probably mm, 16, 18 inches deep in here. Yeah, Fozzie's really enjoying that. So it'd be interesting what they decide to do today because we just came straight back this way. You know, which direction they'll go. It's better if you're just willing to go where they want to go. I mean, if there's places you don't want them to go, that's that's totally understandable. And I think it's easy enough to work with them to keep them out of areas or even in areas. But, you know, them finding what they need to put together like a nutritious day for themselves right like they just being able to wander around and pick through all of these things like at some point they'll go hit and eat some of the bark like the the ponderosa's kind of shed bark and they'll go pick it up off the ground like the potato chips and eat it but then then just walk away you know they'll just do that like once or twice a day that they're really it feels it seems like they'll eat one thing and then they'll go eat another thing and then on the way back they'll eat this other thing um and i'm just really curious to see how that changes through the seasons because in the winter time they just don't have access to the same things you know and, and i just i think i wonder about like parasites and things like that like if the winter time forcing them well i said forcing them it's just what there is to eat uh is that if you're eating things like <laughs> um bitter bush which is really high in tannins and ponderosa which has got to be high in terpenes and god knows what you know that i wonder what this effect this has on their um their digestive systems and helping them uh, keep parasites out I imagine it's a pretty big deal, right? I'm sure there's probably studies out there, but I think, you know, sheep that are browsing like this, I would imagine have a much healthier gut microbe just because they're eating such a variety of vegetation. You know, and that said, there's also loco weed out here, and I've they've gotten on it in the fall when I had them up here. So I think I might be able to, to handle that by uh, when they're up here. But, um, cause now it's perfect. They have not really, the loco weeds underneath snow, it's probably still green. But you know, they, they hang their head down, they act kind of hyper, they really, yeah, you can tell that they're, you can tell that they're kind of, they're like on drugs. <laughs> and hey man, I am not judging. I'm just saying like, you just can't let it overwhelm you so you don't eat the other food, you know? Um, cause I think that's the main thing is, you know, there's a certain amount of toxicity that probably, well, I don't know what all it affects, but I know that they're, one of the symptoms is they stop putting on weight if they're eating too much of it. So we don't really have that much of it, but I have seen them, you know, have days where they sort of got onto it and I had to really push them off. And, uh, you know, especially mama was really, really doing that, but you know, I, I think they'll learn and I also think that there's just not that much of it you know I can imagine if you got him into a patch where it was just like a lot of loco weed that would be a problem uh go follow these guys up this way so you know there's but it really seems like uh them being able to um walk around and select their own diet really makes sense and I think there's a, quite a bit of research that even points that direction for humans as well. You know. <clears throat> Those are two really, for here, really big uh, uh, Rocky Mountain Douglas firs this guy here and this one here there's quite a few around like this is a ponderosa you can kind of tell there's a different real different form to them you can really kind of tell looking at the pine cones kind of in contrast to the background 
you know, you can see how long these needles are where these guys are much finer. <coughs> but only getting 11 or 12 inches of rain or precipitation a year, it's a really um, amazing uh, to have these two trees here. It's a real nexus of water right here. This this is one of the bigger canyons that comes off this side, but there's a few other others up this way that have been feeding into it. And it's kind of really rocky up here. There's a rock bottom to it, but right here it starts to get sandy. It starts to drop though. So I think that water is dropping into all that sand. And uh, I mean, who knows how big these these roots are? You know, the other thing like. You know, those are pretty big trees, like they're, they're probably 36 inches in diameter or so, maybe a little bit smaller. Um, but they're growing on this like shaly kind of mudstone, uh, like I think it's Jurassic formation there. And the thing about it is it like uh, it holds water when it gets water and stuff, but it tends to cause things to be stunted like almost like bonsais <laughs> so it's interesting that they're even that big like I really wonder how old they are um, you know I think they're just really good at getting water there's another really important uh, member of the forest here also a little hard to see them but it is a really really big Rocky Mountain juniper which is also probably more than three feet in diameter at its base. Um, just amazing old trees. And it's also at the end of a, another canyon there. You know, they're really, you can see that it all revolves around the water. You know? 